Howdy do buckaroos, welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> what we are going to work on today is a little bit of safety. So we've been trying to make this thing a hot rod. Now I think we should make it a safe hot rod. <laughs> um, so today we're going to work on drive shaft loops, which is actually a NHRA rule when you're running these big meat Larry Hoosiers. So you have to have drive shaft loops in case it dead hooks, breaks a U-joint drive shaft don't go flying out hitting somebody so I have this summit kit here um, part number is right there some dash G 7900 that I'm gonna be using for this outfit and it actually doesn't fit exactly how I want it to so we're gonna have to modify it a little bit because the Chevy's notoriously have a Big old drive line in the back, big aluminum ones. So we're gonna have to modify a few things on it to make it work, but we're gonna make it work regardless. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna have to modify it and we will go about modifying it, doing a little bit of welding, cutting, bolt this some buck in for the rear. Eventually I will figure one out for the front, but it's not as big of a priority as the rear. So let's show you, I gotta remember where I put them. But, I think they're over here on the bench, but we will, I'm going to show you how I'm going to modify them, and we will go about cutting them up, welding them up, and getting them mounted on this bad boy. So let's go over to the bench here. Alright, so here's all the parts we got here. Here's the actual loop part of the operation, and these are your two brackets. Now, to be honest with you, this kit is actually meant for a car, so it's supposed to mount... Your floorboard basically is right here, where your frame rails on your car. Then these guys mount here in the middle, and you have all your adjustment holes to go up, down, however need be. And it bolts together like that. So I'm actually going to modify these brackets. I'm going to use these two holes here. I might leave three just for a little bit of adjustment up, down. But... I'm going to end up cutting it about here and mounting it to a rear cross member that I'm going to show you. Same thing on this side. So we'll get those out of the way. We'll talk about that more when I get to cutting them. But these here are the main parts I have to modify because, like I said, these Chevys are notorious for having a big old round aluminum driveline. And these, although they do fit around the driveline, it is super super tight there is zero room for error I actually don't have room to put a nut or a bolt because these are such tight fit around the drive line so what I'm gonna do is just use this old scrap piece flat stock I had laying around and I'm actually gonna widen it about that much so I'm gonna cut this guy down the middle and this guy like that add that in there and then just weld that in so they'll be just a little bit wider wide enough for what I need we'll cut these guys down and get everything bolted in so let me get to cutting these things cleaning it up get these cut and then we are gonna get to welding these things gonna get to do a little bit more TIG welding today so every little bit of practice helps and this is perfect practice so let me get the foam propped up, I'll get these guys cut up and we will get to welding. Alright, so I got everything kind of mocked up here, all cut up, cleaned up. Ooh, pardon me. So as you see, like I said, we're just going to widen it, the width of that. A uh, piece of plate steel. It's gonna buzz it weld it together, and then, like I said, we're gonna chop these boys off about here. Just give me something to mount to my cross member here, and leave all my adjustment holes for adjustability. Boom, boom, bolted on, ready to go. So I'm gonna prop the phone up, and we're gonna get some welding done here. It's 
So we got them all stuck together. Nothing to write home about, but the TIG welds definitely are getting better. Again, like I said, not nothing's get, gonna get me famous on Instagram, but they're definitely getting better. And I gotta give, actually, I gotta give a huge thanks out to John Chirito at Granby Truck Shop, formerly Granby Truck Shop, known now known as Black Tie Race Fab. He's about five hours away from me, another Colorado boy, but he's been huge in getting me to figure out this TIG thing. Before him, I didn't even hardly know how to spark the thing up. So I wanted to give a huge thanks to him for giving me tips on cup sizes and tungstens and rods and settings. He's just been a huge help on this TIG weld stuff. So big shout out to John at Black Tie Race Fab. But we did get these things stuck together. So I think I'm going to bolt them to these brackets here and kind of get them mocked up in the truck and then I'll know how much I need to cut off that long leg of the L-shaped brackets and then we will get holes drilled and get them bolted up. Alright, so I decided to spare you guys the uh, boredom of me drilling a bunch of holes and getting nuts and bolts all drug around and figured out, but got all the holes drilled, got this driveline loop mounted. I'm going to try and show you guys, but the truck's on the ground and I got to crawl under there, but I should be able to get you guys a pretty decent video of what it looks like all mounted up. So let me try and crawl under there and I will show you guys what's going on. All right. So as you can see, got this cross member right here, which was perfect for what I was trying to do. And I know I told you guys I was going to cut it, but I actually ended up leaving them long because this long flat cross member just kind of worked out perfectly for it. Didn't have to drill new holes in the bracket, things like that. So I just marked out my holes, drilled it out, got eight bolts holding it down, eight bolts holding it together in the center. And it turned out pretty slick. Got just enough room around it. It's got enough room. I kind of cheated it towards the bottom a little bit because when this thing squats, the drive line is going to get closer to the floor. So that's why the gap's a little bit bigger above the drive line than it is below. The only time the drive line's going to get closer to the cross member is when I pick this thing like up on the lift or something and the rear axle sacks down. So that's why I made the gap a little bit bigger on top. I think it turned out pretty slick and it's just one more thing closer to being safe and being ready to race. So there you guys go. I was telling you in a few of my old videos that that was one of the one of the smaller details that I was needing to get done before this thing hit the track. So came in here on a Saturday, got that thing taken care of, and it turned out perfect. And plus got to get a little bit of TIG practice, which I'm always wanting to do. Excuse me. So I think that'll end it for this video. Just a a little bit of safety stuff, getting one more thing checked off that list, ready to go. Um, the next video will be getting this watered air intercooler plumbed in. For sure that's going to be the next video. Um, I actually rounded up a couple of the fittings for it, but the local store didn't have the hose I needed today on a Saturday, so we're going to have to do that sometime next week and hopefully get it buttoned up before this race, which is this weekend coming up seven days from now so <laughs> i'm kind of pushing it close but i think we should be all right guys um yeah so i think i'm gonna cut it off there guys thanks for watching um like share subscribe comment hit that bell for sure so you know when i post that water tear intercooler plumbing video and let me know what you guys think thanks for watching guys and i will catch you on the next one